it's not custom out of reverence to God. Out of reverence to God. This is not reverence to me. This is not reverence to the church. This is out of reverence to God. Anytime the scroll was open before the people, they stood out of reverence. There's something to that, my God, when you honor God like that. And it's not outdated. It's Bible. The Bible is never outdated. Even though some things are Old Testament, some things are New Testament. The Old Testament is God concealed. New Testament is God revealed. You can't separate the two. They go hand in hand. God is not divided. He's the God of the old and he's the God of the new. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Contra con even contrary to what some other people may be talking and saying, God is still the God of the old as, as well as the God of the new. My God, so I tend to honor the things. Everything that we try to do over here going off of Christ is biblically based. Ain't nothing, my God, from my mind or something from tradition because tradition don't keep you. God is what keeps you. And so if you could turn to the book of Job, this was based out of my one year reading, my God, several days ago, and it spoke to my spirit. And I thank my God from the things that I've been hearing and dealing with, my God, that this is a timely word for the church. So we're going to deal with Job chapter 1, starting at verse 1. When you have it, say amen. amen. The word of God says, there was once was a man. There was once was a man named Job who lived in the land of us. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. He feared God, y'all, and stayed away from evil. Look at those principles about this man. When someone describe you, will they say you blameless? Do people say that you have integrity? Do your lifestyle show that you reverence God? Are you quick, my God, to turn away and shun the very appearance of evil, Christians? Look at those principles, something that we need to add to our life. We, I didn't say you, we need to add to our life. That's a beautiful way to be described. Blameless, integrity, fear of God, and shunned and stayed away from evil. Verse 2 said he had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, and 500 female donkeys. He also had many servants. He was, in fact, the richest person in the entire area or in the entire east. Job's sons would take turns preparing feasts in their homes, and they would also invite their three sisters to celebrate with them. When the celebrations ended, sometimes after several days, Job, look at this y'all, would purify his children. He would get up early in the morning and offer a burnt offering for each of them. For Job said to himself, perhaps my children have sinned and have cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular practice called intercession. One day the members of the heavenly court, that's the angels, y'all, came to present themselves before the Lord. The accuser of the, present themselves before the Lord and the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. God asked him, y'all, I'm going somewhere. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Ooh, boy, I can't even get up at the word. I've been patrolling. While we playing, he's patrolling. While we ain't studying, while we ain't grounded, I'm, I'm, he's patrolling, watching everything that's going on. While we caught up in bitterness and unforgiveness and come on, don't. He's patrolling, watching everything that's going on. We talking about the devil. We ain't talking about God right now. Mm, my God. Verse 8 says, then the Lord asked Satan, oh my God, have you noticed or have you considered my servant Job? He is the finest, look how God describes him. He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, watch this church. Yes, but Job has a good reason for fearing God. Verse 10 says, this is Satan talking to God. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out and take away everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. Verse 12 said, all right, God said, you may test him. Lord will allow testing. The Lord said to Satan, do whatever you want with everything he possesses. But don't harm him physically. 
Satan left the Lord's presence. I'm going to stop right there, uh, Mahogany. Father God, thank you. Oh, Lord, help me birth this word. Speak, Father God. Oh, Lord, speak, Lord. The atmosphere is ready. The water has been stirred. Let your will be done. I'm in submission unto your spirit, Lord. Save somebody. Encourage somebody, Lord. Deliver, heal, and completely set free. Shift the mindset. Turn down religion. Go up into the attic of our minds and purify our minds. Give us a broader understanding, my God, in the things of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. While you're gathering yourself, I was doing some studying, and I'm going to quote John MacArthur, my God. And he was speaking. He made mention in the great study Bible that he has. I never knew this, so I'm referencing John MacArthur. And he says that sin is vertical. Vertical. And he talks about the word, he uses the word blameless as horizontal. I said, said oh God, oh God, sin is vertical. Mm. Blameless is horizontal. As Job, going off of Christ and guests, lived before the watchful eyes of his peers, no one could justly charge Job with moral failure. Man, Job was a cold dude. His reputation was impeccable by any measure. Job was a prominent and affluent man, church. His godliness, church, his wealth and status made it true that this man was the greatest in the East. Are y'all with me so far? Going over Christ, are y'all with me so far? Yes. He spent his money, he spent his time, and he spent his energy rescuing the needy, caring for the handicapped, and dying. He took in orphans. I'm talking about the richest man at that time. He took in orphans. He even took on the powers that be, and he argued the cases of the underprivileged. This afternoon, we are going to look into the life of Job, and as we do, I want to ask you a question. Ooh, my God. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. I got to make sure I come to this side too. I want to ask you a question. And some of you saying, Pastor, what's the question? Ask yourself this question right here. Can you stand to be blessed? Can you stand? Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. To be blessed. Everybody can can want to be blessed, but everybody ain't prepared to handle the blessings. One of the things that hurt and affect a lot of professing believers is when God begins to allow some prosperity to take place in our lives, we start worshiping it instead of the creator of it. And so this is an interesting study. I never really preached Job at the level that God has given it to me. And it probably got because God said it wasn't time then. But I want to share something with you, church, that I understand what's taking place in Job's life. Satan said the only reason why Job is worshiping you is because look how you blessed him. Take that stuff away from him and then you'll find out what's really cracking. I'm making it where y'all can understand. Some of y'all, the only reason why you're doing what you're doing is because God is there is some validity to that because truth be told, I need God to deliver me. I need God to bless me. I want some financial prosperity. I want some, come on somebody. And so there is some substance to that. But when that becomes your all in all, when you find yourself only serving God, my God, because of what he can do for you, you, you are set up for failure. Because when God remove his hedge, when God allowed the enemy, my God, to come into your life and attack the very thing that your heart is connected to, then what you going to do, Christians? That's why he say many are called, but few are chosen. When he say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, what he is saying, my God, my God, I never knew you intimately. You serve me, God, because of what I can do for you. You didn't serve me because you love me. A lot of people that are sitting in churches all around, and including going off for of Christ Church, we're not here because we want God. We're here because we want God to do something for us, only that and nothing else. And when he do it, go on. See, we'll come to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, and even to men's and women's meetings, my God, when we desperate and need God to do something. But as soon as he do it, then our Lord immediately shifts. Now we have cried. Now we've asked God to do it. God has stepped in. My God, he done done it. And now what we do, we become inconsiderate and inconsistent when it comes to the things of God. 
And so, my God, this is a good word. Ah, this is a good word. Can you stand to be blessed? Look at your neighbor and ask them that. Can you stand? Wesley, can you stand, Wesley, to be blessed? Again, I'm going to say this as I move. Everybody wants, my God, the blessings of the Lord. But can you stand to be blessed? Because when you are blessed like Job was blessed, guess what? Here comes the enemy. When you have made up your mind and decided that you want to live for Christ and that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you want something different in your life, my God, guess what? Here comes the enemy. So put point number one on the screen for me, Mahogany. Let's look at this unlikely discipleship. I want to tell you something. Job was minding his business. He woke up that morning, my God, my God, he was going about his normal business. And while he was going about his normal business, ooh, Pastor Dean, this is good. My God, heaven was having a board meeting. About Job. Oh my God, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to say this and I'll come back and pick it up again. I want you to know something. My God, that just like you can see me and I can see you, the spiritual realm is way more realer than the natural. And I want you to know, my God, that, that, that there's a board meeting going on about you. Oh uh, my God, my God. And so I want you to know that the enemy is inquiring about you. <laughs> oh, he's saying he only doing it because you have blessed him. She's only doing it because she, you have blessed her, my God. And Satan is trying to get to God, my God, and say, okay, 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 okay. Sh take it all away from her and then see what she's going to do. So can you stand to be blessed? I want to set this up. And so here is an unlikely candidate. Man in his own business. The Bible just described him as a man of, he was blameless. He, was, he feared God. He shunned evil. He was a man of integrity. He wasn't doing nothing but doing what God has told him to do. But yet God and Satan was having a board meeting about him. I'm trying to get y'all to understand what's going on in this world. So point a, put right A up under point number one. Let's look at Job's character. Let me lay this foundation. Verse one says that Job was a man of, he was, he was, he was, he was pure. He, had, he was a man of integrity. He, he lived in holiness. He was a man who lived his life in the fear of God. He was a man against whom no one could make an accusation that was stick. And so here he is, this man really don't have no contamination on his life. Why is he going through so much suffering? Excuse me, a lot of us ask, why do good people suffer? Why do good people, my God, struggle and bad people or wicked people prosper? The Bible says God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. And if you and I, I and you don't understand the sovereignty, my God, of God, we can, we can, we, oh my God, and we don't understand the inner workings of God, we can get real discouraged serving God. Because we're looking at people who don't care nothing about God, prosper, and live at ease. And here we is, my God, barely can make it from day to day, check to check. Come on, somebody. But see, that's just another distraction. You would be able to understand how God works and how God moves when you open up that constitution called the Bible and begin to read. Quit just listening, my God, to what George Myers is saying. Quit just listening, my God, to what Pastor Peoples is saying. Open up that book and let God give you some personal revelation. Quit depending on everybody else to teach you and depend on the God, who my God, or the Bible to teach you. And so Job, my God, had, 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 had solid character. So he was an unlikely candidate to go through the things that he's going through. Some of you may feel the same way right now. My God, write this down. Be up on the point number two. I'm going somewhere. Let's look at Job's commitment. Job had character and Job had commitment according to verse five and six. Let me read it a little bit. It says... Let me get my, let me, let me look, five, verse five. It says, when these celebrations ended, sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children. He would get up early in the morning and offer a burnt offering for each of them, all 10 of them. For Job said to himself, going off of Christ's church and guests, perhaps my family have seen, I mean, my children have seen and have cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular practice. This was his regular practice, talking about commitment. Job served as the family priest. As I teach you men, we are priests, prophets, and kings of our home. A priest, my God, represents his home. The prophet goes to God and get what God say. Then he gives it to the priest. The priest declare it in the family. And the king is the overseer. So as a man, you have a role as the priest, prophet, and king of your home. King, domain, you own that. That's your domain. As a priest, you stand, as a priest, you stand, my God, over your family, in your family, and proclaim, my God. Then you step in the office of a prophet. You receive from God, step in the office of a priest, give it to the people, my God, in your family, then you oversee kingdom. Yes. You have a role. 
That's deep, ain't it, woman of God? Oh, my God. That is, uh, me and somebody give me God a hand for that, man. <laughs> I know that's a little heavy. I know that's heavy. But you got to understand that you are a priest, prophet, and king. You have a role. You have dual citizenship as a father, my God. You have things that you have to do, men of God. And so, my God, Job got up every uh, morning, my God, at the, at the end of the celebration, and he stood in the office of a priest, and he offered sacrifices on behalf of his children because he said that they might have sinned because they were doing their thing, feasting, and they may have sinned. And so, therefore, he stepped in the office of a priest and gave sacrifices regularly for all of his children. So he was a man of commitment. Come on, somebody. Now, let's also look at this. Write this down. See up on the point number one. He was also a man of consistency. Job wasn't a part time believer going hard for Christ's church and guests. He went hard for Christ every day of his life. Every day was spent striving for righteous living and avoiding sin and seeking God for others and working out his relationship with the Lord. All these things, church, made Job an unlikely candidate, an unlikely disciple for trouble. This man had character. Ooh, I'm trying to help you, church. Listen to me. Don't get distracted. He had character. He had commitment. He was consistent to the things of God. Now, why in the world is this man going through all of this trouble and he is striving for perfection? He's not running around here, my God, living like a demon. This man ain't bothering nobody but representing the kingdom, being an ambassador of the kingdom, and his life is getting ready to be turned up, sad. Down. Can I let you know this afternoon, everybody, just because you're going through something don't mean that you're in sin. But some of the things that we are going through is because we are in sin. And so the man of God was an unlikely candidate, my God. Who, my God, to be suffering at the level he is getting ready to suffer. Most people have the idea that we suffer for wrongdoing. That is surely what Job's wife and friends thought. According to Job 2 and 9, the word of God says, his wife said to him, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Why don't you curse God and die? Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. Job was going through so much suffering. Oh, my God, he's going through so much pain. Just read the story. My God, it's a good read. And take your time and read it. Don't just read the word. And so, therefore, this man was going through so much torment, my God, but he maintained integrity. He maintained his consistency. He maintained his loyalty to God. And his own wife said, why don't you curse God and die? Oh, my God, my God. Come on, the enemy always trying to use the closest thing to you. Be careful who the voices you're listening to. I said, be careful to the closest voices that's to you. Mm. The fact is, sometimes we do suffer because of our sins, our foolish decisions. Sometimes we suffer because of other sins and, and we make foolish decisions and we get caught up in the ignorance of other people as well as our own. Sometimes God will send suffering church like Job is going through to test and grow our faith. Sometimes God will allow and send suffering to test and grow our faith. Sometimes he allows it, talking about suffering, to come to sanctify our lives. The Bible says, be ye sanctified, be ye holy, strive. We as believers should be striving for holiness. We don't get to give ourselves a pass. I thank God for grace, but we have used grace as a license to practice habitual sin because we always tell ourselves that God going to forgive me, which is he will. But there come a time, my God, that there is consequences behind habitual sin. So when we teach grace, you got to teach the fullness of grace. Don't just teach it that it's okay. God going to forgive you. Because he will when you truly repent. But the also behind every choice that you and I make, I and you make, come on somebody, there is consequences. But see, nobody want to tell us that because we want everybody to come back next week. But there's consequences when we habitually disobey God. Mm, mm, mm. So suffering will come to sanctify our lives. So what am I saying? That there's a purpose. In the last two, the first ones I mentioned was, was you pretty much self-inflicted, wrong choices and wrong decisions. Sometimes we can go through things because of other people's ignorance. I know I've been there. Come on, somebody. Have anybody ever suffered because of somebody else's? Come on. Okay. And then God shifts on them, my God, and says that I, I you suffer, my God, to, to grow your faith, my God, and to, and, and, and to sanctify your life. I want you to understand something. Some of the things that you're going through this afternoon, boy, y'all need to hear me in the spirit. Some of the things that you are facing this afternoon is all about your faith. Whoever, between God and Satan, whoever get the faith, get the life. I'm going to say that one more time. 
I said between God and Satan. Remember, there's a boardroom in heaven. My God, God and Satan is talking about the thing. Satan saying, take everything from me and curse it. God said, no, he won't. I know what I put in him. He's built for a tough. Come on, somebody. And Satan said, no, no, no. Only why he's serving you, my God, because what you got for him. God said, okay, okay, I'm going to allow you to handle your business, my God. But I know what's in that one. Don't trust me, God. Know what's in you. He know what you can handle and what you can't handle. God know I must have put on you, my God. He knew what Job could handle. That's why he allowed Satan to do what he did to Job. Are you close enough with God to where God can say, I know what Laquita can handle. I know what Tanya can handle. I know what Sharon can handle. I know what Pastor Michelle can handle. God know what you can handle. God knew what Job can handle. That's why I said, okay. They, they, they going back and forth. So he said, I can get him. Just, just, just give me an opportunity to move your heads. I can't get to him. Ooh, that's a word for somebody right there. Oh my God. When you in God's will, ah, when you in God's will, that's why the safest place is in his will. When you're walking with God, when you're striving for righteousness, my God, when you're striving for holiness, my God, when you're doing things right, you in God's will and you protect it, it can't nothing get to you unless God allow it, my God. Oh, can't nothing get to you unless God allow it when you're in his will. That's why it's dangerous to get out of his will. And everything that the enemy is trying to do to you and I, I and you is to get you out of God's will. Because yeah. when you come from up under God's cover, you open pray for the devil. Yeah. Boy, that's heavy right there, my God. Some of you, my God, you don't understand how dangerous it is yeah. to get out of God's will. You plug in, then you unplug. You plug in, then you unplug. One minute you're going hard, next minute you ain't. One minute you're excited, one minute you forgive, and now you're bitter and unforgiving. Come on, that's what the enemy wants you to do is get out of God's will. Yeah. Because when you're out of God's will, you are open pray for the devil. Yeah. Satan, my God, couldn't do nothing to Job because God had him protect him. But God had to protect him because he was striving for holiness. He was striving to live a blameless life. He feared evil. I mean, he feared God and he stayed away from evil. And so when you're striving and adding those things into your life, it's hard for the enemy to get to you. Oh, I promise you, my God, there's benefits in striving for holiness. Oh, holiness is still good, baby. <laughs> striving for righteousness is still good, baby. It ain't outdated. I don't care what the world say. Oh, my God, I'd rather be in the will of God than be out of the will of God. My God, so there is some things that come in your life because of God will allow them. And so what you should be doing is evaluating yourself. Some of the pressure, some of the pain, some of the things that got me uneasy right now. Why is it? Is it self-inflicted or is it God? And even if it is self-inflicted, God can use it. That's when you step over there, my God. I bet in Romans 8, 28, say all things are working together for the good. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, you got to take a look at yourself. Just like I got to take a look at myself. We asking God, my God, for the blessings. But can you stand to be blessed? I ask you, can you stand to be blessed, baby? Because see, Job is suffering because he was so blessed. Oh, my God, there's a level of suffering that God, that'll come your way when you're blessed. <laughs> oh, when you're on the front line for God, baby, you got to go through some things. <laughs> oh, when you're standing tall, Pastor Champ, my God, people going to lie on you and talk about you, baby. Oh, my God, when you got a heart to please God, my God, trust me, here come the enemy. So, again, can I ask you the question, can you stand to be blessed? Because if you want to be blessed, I promise you, here come persecution. Ah, uh, my God, things going to begin to happen in your life, my God. And everything that's going on right now in your life ain't the devil, baby. God got a plan and a purpose purpose for it. My God, but can you stand to be blessed? Let's go a little deeper. Yes, yes. God will allow suffering to come to sanctify our lives, but here is the greatest reason. You're going to like this. Write this verse down. Write down John 9, 1 and 3. John, the gospel, chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. The greatest reason we suffer, y'all, is for the glory of the Lord. Watch this. As Jesus was walking alone, he saw a man who had been born blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was it, I mean, why was this man born blind? Was it, look how the disciples began to assume, perception is a dangerous thing. Don't, you know, if you can help it, I said, if you can help it, don't go around trying to make nobody respect you. But if you can help it, don't allow people to formulate wrong perceptions about you. Perception, my God, is a cold-blooded thing. And a lot of people can't really get into God because they have the wrong perception about God. A lot of people can't fully step into that intimate relationship with Christ because they have been so doctrinized. They have got so much tradition in them, Pastor. My God, my God. And so it's hard to renovate their mind. It's hard to clean their mind, my God, because they've been lied to, my God. My God, they got so much biblical, I mean, uh, 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 church tradition in them, my God. And so God got to try to go in and renovate their mind. And people have formulated the wrong perception about God you will formulate the wrong perception about your sisters and brothers. My God, the enemy is trying to distract so that he can kill. Yeah. 
He wants you to get offended. He wants you to leave where God planted you at. Oh my God. He wants you to get discouraged and quit, my God. He wants you to make all kinds of excuses. He wants you to find somebody to blame. Remember, Job was blameless. Oh my God. Quit, 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 quit letting the enemy, my God, formulate a perception in your mind that is keeping you in prison. You have built a safe place, my God, to stay in prison. You have allowed yourself to stay in prison, but you're blaming everybody for your prison. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You have built a prison, my God, to stay in, but you're blaming everybody for your prison. Because you have formulated the wrong perception about stuff. That's why the Bible says, King Solomon, and all your getting, get an understanding. And so, therefore, things that you are wrestling with, things you are dealing with, be still. Get off Facebook. Quit partying. Quit going to the black and white clubs and all that and the, and the party buses and all of those type of stuff and get still and say, God, speak to me. God, tell me what's going on, God. Help me understand what I'm dealing with this, God. Give me wisdom. What is the purpose for this, God? Oh, I got to turn down instead of turn up, my God. I got to get still in the presence of the Lord so you can show me which way I'm going. And so we begin to formulate a whole lot of perest- I mean, perception off of wrong doctrines, wrong information. Quit listening to people, talking about people. That person, my God, just because, my God, something may have happened with Dion, I can't base my perception, my opinion, because of what happened with, with because you and, you and I had a bad uh, agreement. Yeah, yeah. I got to get to know you for myself. Yeah. Because what happened between you and me, not happening between me and you. And a lot of y'all basing lending your ear to evil. Oh, my God. The Bible says don't lend your ear to evil. A lot of you lending your ear to evil. You're listening to the wrong people. You're focused on the wrong thing. Why don't you give that much energy to God so you can get free? Boy, God is taking me somewhere. I'm trying to help the church. I don't know where that come from, but that helps somebody. Your perception. Your perception got you lost. Your perception got you in pain right now. Oh, no, my God, you didn't formulate the wrong opinion about stuff. They disconnected from the vision. You get out, leaving the church. All of those mess. And so, my God, my God, the disciples formulated an opinion. They, 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 they built a perception. It, it, the reason why this man is, is blind, what did he do? Every time you're going through something, the first thing they think is, what did you do? Why is she going through this? Why, why, why? When you're having situations in your marriage, why is, what, what's going on? Who cheating? Who doing what? Oh, my God, everything ain't about cheating. Everything ain't about seeing. Every time somebody comes to the altar, my God, don't mean they're having problems. Boy, we got some cold blooded perceptions in the body of Christ everywhere. But God said, watch this, y'all. Remember, I told y'all the, the greatest reason for going through a level of suffering is for the glory of God. And watch this, my God. My God, Jesus told him, my God, his parents, his parents, his parents didn't sin. It was not because his parents sinned, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen. This man was born, born blind. Mm. Oh, my God, he was born blind. Born like this. Can't see. He can hear. Oh my God, but can't see. A lot of y'all can hear, but you can't see right now. Oh my God. Oh my God. You're hearing, but you're not seeing. <laughs> I'm not talking about physical sight. I'm talking about vision. <laughs> you can't see what God is trying to take you. You don't understand what God is trying to do in your life because you're trying to understand it, my God, with a fleshly carnal mind and you can't perceive it. <laughs> oh my God. But this man was born blind, my God, for the sole purpose that one day, oh my God, God would touch my God. John, I want you to write about a man born blind and the purpose of him being blown by my God is for me to heal him so I can cause the people around him to be delivered some of you are going through things my God because God is waiting for people to get around so that he can heal you so that they can believe in God I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. what hey my God oh my God everything you're going through my God is for the glory of the Lord Oh my God, my God, God allowed me to get, oh my God, I said, God, God, uh, he didn't do it, but I did it, my choices, I got real sick out there on the street, but God said, you know what, I'm going to allow all this to happen in his life, but I'm going to use it for my glory. We should have killed him, I'm going to make death be still. Uh, when they said he wasn't going to make it, I'm going to say, rise and come forth, baby. Oh, this is all for the glory of the Lord. Ken, Ken, what's going on is for the glory of the Lord, so that people could get saved. Some things ain't about you, it's about the people that's connected to you, baby. You got to learn how to praise God. Hey! Everything you're going through ain't about you. It's about people that's connected to you. If God didn't love you, he'd allow you to die a long time ago, baby. I need somebody to give God some glory. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ooh, that's why it's good to flow in the spirit. Tony, I'm reminded what you just sung, baby. Oh, my God. It's not all. It's not about me. But it's all about God. 
My God, this man was born for the sole purpose so God can get the glory. I thank God that I made it out. <laughs> That's why I'm so radical, Harmony. That's why I love God the way I do because I'm looking back and some of them didn't make it out. So I'm shouting because I'm free. I'm shouting because I got a good life and it's good on this side, baby. I didn't taste the goodness of the Lord. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. Do I got any people free in this church other than pastor people? Oh my God. Yes, Lord. Let me give you this right quick. I told you I feel all right, Pastor. I preach my breast under pressure. Come on, somebody. Because then I'll be crushed, my God, and the spirit to come alive. Oh, pressure is good when you preach the gospel. Oh, my God, because you got to rely on the spirit instead of your flesh. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Pressure is good. Oh, my God. I said pressure is good when you're going through. I like to go through. Paul said I love to go through. Paul said, oh my God, I look forward into my family. Paul said, thank you, Lord, that I get to suffer for you, God. Oh, because you're molding me and making me. Ah! Somebody give God the glory. It's good to go through, baby. See, they don't understand. There's only a certain women over. Oh, my God. If you understand that suffering has a purpose, give God some glory. Oh, my God. If you understand that suffering. Okay. Let me push. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Write this down by her. I mean, listen to this right here. My God. This comes from my study, this part right here. This didn't come from my spirit, but I want to read this to you. My God, I pulled this. This says, one truth we should take away from the book of Job is that the tree that stands the tallest is the tree that is most likely to get struck by the lightning. When you are dedicated to the Lord, to his will, and to his work, you are a candidate for pain and suffering. You are more likely to be attacked when you live closer to the Lord than if you are not living for him. Different, my God, from popular belief. When you're standing tall for God, baby, here he come. When you have got your mind made up that you're going to serve God. When you, when you might come on somebody. And that's why I always tell y'all, men of God, that's, that's the, my, my, my men. It takes a real man to serve God. Anybody can go through something, Rico, and decide, you know what, I'm finna go out and get turned up. I'm gonna give me some good weed. I'm finna go out and give me a cold shot of this cognac on the rocks. Come on, somebody. I'm finna find me two or three bras, my God, that I can turn. See, see, that's called self medicating. But it takes something for a man to be going through hell. And he said, you know what, my God? Naked I came and naked I shall go. I'm standing with integrity. I'm standing with holiness. I'm standing with purity. I refuse to go back to my life. Oh, my God. It takes something to walk with God. Anybody can quit, can't can. Anybody can go back to the world. But can you stand to be blessed? It takes something, Moses, to stand. So it takes something to walk with this one. Who can you stand? Can you stand, Isaac? Don't get distracted. I promise you. What you're hearing ain't true. Keep walking. Yeah. Keep walking. Yeah. My God, because the enemy want to, oh my God, some things we go through. Remember I told you. Yeah. My God, point number two, let's move forward. Woo, Moses. Can you stand to be blessed? Can you stand to be blessed, Shante? Yolanda, can you stand to be blessed? My Muslim brother told me 20 plus years ago, one day you're going to get out, but can you stay out? Can you, you're going to get out of prison, but can you stay out? A lot of people want to get out, but they can't stay out. A lot of you want to be free, but when God set you free from the different hangups and habits, you find yourself right back in them. You want to be delivered from that bad relationship, and then three months later, you're right back in it. But you didn't. One day, you're going to get out, but can you stay out? Point number two. Let's look at this right here. This man right here, my God, was an unlikely disciple to be suffering persecution. You ain't done nothing, Oliver. Why are you going through? It's a purpose. It's for the glory of the Lord. And then we shift the scene. Now, there's a board meeting going on, as I told y'all earlier. Heaven. God has called heaven to the boardroom. Woo, this is good. Ah, that kind of made me put a little uh, kingdom walk. Uh. <laughs> yes, Lord, we get to meet with the king, baby. I love it. Let's look at verse 6 through 12. It says, one day, 6 through 12, one day, the members of heaven, uh, my God, heaven's court, came to present themselves before the Lord. My God, I got that board meeting, by the way, Moostock, from you. Moostock say every morning he have a board meeting with him and the Holy Spirit. My God. And so, my God, I thought about that. Watch this, Tiffany, my God. Heaven is having a board meeting about us because we are trees ten and tall. And the devil think that only reason why we're doing it because we're blessed. Oh, my God. It says, one day the members of heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord. And the accuser, Satan, came with them. 
Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. Satan never said a word in the presence of God, but God asked him a question. Watch this. The Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then verse 8 says, the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? Uh-oh. Wow. Job didn't say, Satan didn't say nothing about Job. God said, have you noticed? Wow. Oop. God said, God said, <laughs> Jackie, oh, oh, it's a board meeting going on about his daughter. God said, have you noticed? Have you noticed the heat? Have you noticed T's son? The reason why God asked Satan, have you noticed? Because God knew it was in Job. That's why the Bible says I won't put on you what you can't bear a hand on. The Lord said, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job's good reason. But yes, Job has good reasons to fear you. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. But reach out, your, reach out and take away everything. So I ask you, can you stand to be blessed? And he will cur surely curse you. God said, all right, go ahead and test him. While Job is living his life on here on earth, y'all, watch this. Events are taking place in heaven. While you're living, while we're sitting here right now, there's things going on in the heavens, baby. My God, while you get up in the morning, if the Lord wait, allow us to see another day, trust me, there's meetings going on in heaven. God is working out his wheel in the middle of a wheel. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is doing some things, my God. And so God got to allow you and I to get to a point to where he going to say, okay, Satan is Satan. The Bible says Satan is accused of the brother. And my God. And so Satan is probably coming every day. Which is, no, 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 ain't no probably Satan is coming every day asking God. My God, God said, you know, no, 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 no. Tanya, let me get Tanya. Let me get Tanya. You're like, no, nah, she ain't ready yet. Keep that wall of a text around her. No, 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 it ain't time to let her go through, my God. Let me get Sharon. My God, God said, no, 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 no. I'm working this thing out. Let me get past the shell. No, 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 no. You can't touch that one right there, my God. Ooh, let me get your niece. Let me get, she get See, 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 see. He's inquiring about you, but God said, no, 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 no. I ain't ready to turn you loose on him yet because one thing about it, whatever God does, he wants the glory. Yeah. And so if he let the enemy get on us too soon and we ain't ready and we tap out, then we have mocked God. And God don't want to be mocked. I said if we, he turn him loose too early and we can't handle it, then we didn't mock God and walked away from God. Now God don't get the glory. Satan said, I told you. I told you that's the only reason why they serve you. And the God would never lose to Satan. Oh my God. So there's a meeting still going on right now at 240. Write this down up on the point number one. I mean two. Let's look at the heavenly assembly. The angels making an appearance before God's throne. This blow my mind, y'all, when, when God dropped this on me. The angels makes an, makes an a heavenly appearance. Our angel makes an appearance before God's throne. Apparently, they are there to give an account. As I studied out, they are there to give an account of their service. God is watching you. Every last one of us, one he gave five, one he gave two talents, one he gave one. Everybody in there going to have to give an account for what you God has put in your life. When you return before God, he's going to ask you, what did you do with my talents? What did you do with my gifts? What did you do with what I gave you? I put purpose in you. What you doing with it? I created you, my God, with an assignment. Did you ever seek me to find it? Did you go to church, but did you go meet me who died for the church? See, you're going to have to give an account, baby. God is calling heaven. Can't can to attention. Say, it's time to ante up, baby. It's time to report. I remember when back in the day when I was out there in the street, and we had our meetings. Yeah, you got it's time to clock in, baby. It's time to come talk to the fellas, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're going, I ain't going to have to give an account. Don't think that you just getting away with anything. You ain't just living. You gonna have to give an account. Just like I'm gonna have to give an account on how I pass y'all, how I lead y'all, how I handle my wife, how I handle my children. You go, the Bible said we were standing before God and giving an account, even how we raise our children. Yeah. So woman, mamas, be careful what you expose your kids to, because God gonna judge you for it. Yeah. I said God gonna judge you for it. Because you gotta give an account for it to God. Yeah. Be careful trying to be your kid's best friend. And you know she ain't. Some of us are nowadays most scared of our children. Man, please, my grandma would have knocked me clean across. <laughs> and so they, 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 they came, they came. God called for a board meeting, church. God called for a board meeting, my God. Mm, 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 mm. My God. Mm. To give an account for their service. Mm. Now, why are they having this board meeting? What is Satan doing in heaven? I thought God kicked him up out of heaven. And he fell like lightning. 
But God is calling for a meeting with the angels, the fallen angels at that. And guess what? Satan was a fallen angel too. So when God called for the angels, <laughs> Satan can appear as an angel of light. So when God said angels come forth and sit in the presence of the king, guess what? Satan had legal access right then to come in the presence of the Lord. See what I'm trying to say? Because God gave him permission to come. Because sin cannot dwell in the presence of the Lord. See what I'm trying to say? And so when God gave you permission to come, that's why we got to thank God who for the shedding of the blood. Boy, don't let me get in. My God, because without the shedding of the blood, you and I could not come in the presence of the Lord. My God, the Bible said wherever the deaf angel passed by and saw the blood, if, they, if he seen the blood on the doorpost, it would pass over. Thank God for the blood. Somebody say, Lord, thank you for the blood. And so, my God, he, Satan had permission to come into his presence because God dealt with him because of the blood. But he had to give an account. And when he went to heaven to the board meeting, that's when God started engaging with Satan. Watch this. Write this down. Be up on the point number two. Heaven acknowledgement. Verse 7 and 8 says, my God, what does 7 and 8 say? Let me read this. I want to make sure I teach it. 7 says, uh, mm. 7 say, where have you come from? God's asked him. The Lord answered, I'm patrolling the earth. Then the Lord said, have you noticed Job? Not only does Satan appear in heaven, but his presence is there. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He, he appears in heaven, but his presence is there, and he acknowledges God. God calls him to account for his activities. What did God show me right there? Even though Satan has authority over earth, he still, ooh, Tony, got to give an account to God. God controls the adversary. You think the adversary controls you. The only reason why the enemy controlling some of us is because we're not in God's will. We keep coming out from up under his protection. And when you come out from under God's protection, you get up out of God's will, you're no longer, my God, protected. That's why it's dangerous to get caught outside of the will of God. That's why it's dangerous to die outside of the will of God. Mm. God still, Satan still has to give an account. But just like, oh my God, my God, Satan appeared in Judas at the table. And now we see Satan in heaven. He was getting ready to break, have the Lord's Supper. Jesus said, one of you is going to betray me. The one that dipped in the cup with me. Yeah. Satan was sitting at the table with the disciples in the natural. Now we see that Satan is in heaven. <laughs> Satan. Yeah. Satan is. He was in the natural at the table with the twelve. All that holiness. All that righteousness. But he was still a monster. Ooh, y'all better stay with me in the spirit. All that holiness, all that light, all that light, because he can appear as an angel of light. He can talk like us, sound like us, walk like us, speak in tongues like us, call scripture like us, I preach us, my God, and be sitting right here. And he dressed real good. And so some of my senior women say, ooh, he sure is fine. When did he start coming to the church? Ooh, look at him. Look how he dressed. Ooh, look what he dressed. You see that seven? You see that being? Look what, look what he got. You know? Ooh, and he praising God. Ain't nothing more attractive to a woman, my God, to see a man that's worshiping God. Be careful, though, that the worship ain't contaminated. I said, ain't nothing like seeing a man, baby, worship God. But be careful that the worship ain't contaminated. The angel appeared. Satan appeared as an angel of light. Oh, he's, ooh, ooh, he like, I, I'm not calling you Satan, but ooh, he, yeah, ooh, he look, ooh, he, he's up to a portal, he looks so clean, and he, yeah, he got a job, and he, yeah, angel. Yeah. Satan appeared as an angel. Be careful who you lend your ear to. The Bible says Job shunned the very appearance of evil. That's why you got to know God's voice. It's more important nowadays to know God's voice than it is to speak in tongues, baby. Don't, don't desire to speak in tongues. Desire to hear God and know God's voice. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Everybody want to speak in tongues, but nobody want to know his voice, baby. I need to know his voice, baby. Because when you know his voice, you're going to say, turn left, turn right, keep walking. You need to know God's voice. So they be praying, God, show me your voice. I know he look good. He feel good, but... He appeared as an angel. She appeared as an angel. Y'all know that go. Don't just go for me and women. Let me back up. Y'all better get up off my sons. I know she, I know it. I know it. She look real proper. I'm talking about proper, and I don't need to take it no farther. I'm gonna let that sit right there. Oh my god, sound real good. Saying everything you need to hear. Don't be captivated by lust. 
just happened to say this. I know that we was designed because, boy, I carried you through hell. Girl, you could have left me I don't know how many times. Ooh, all the hell I carried you through. A young 19-year-old woman going through living hell with a gangster. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boy, I love is real. And I ain't in the doghouse either. my God. Just like Minister Lenny say, faith ain't faith until it's tested. Boy, this love I heard been tested. I promise you, I'm sorry, women. I ain't saying nobody here, but you can't break this. You can't penetrate this here, baby. I know I'm a dying piece. I give God the glory, but you can't penetrate this, baby. I'm good. I promise you, I'm good with the first lady. I promise you, I'm straight. I don't need nothing there, Jack. I got enough right there. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. Remember, he appears as an angel of the. Yeah. I told y'all come to torment some devils. Yeah. Shift your focus, cause it can't come here. When Satan is asked about Job, Satan reveals his true identity, y'all. I'm about to. He lives up to his name. The word Satan means the adversary, one who stands in opposition to another. Watch the people that's in opposition to your purpose. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. When people are telling you what you cannot do, ooh, kid, kid, I'm going to use you, son. My God, now that God is doing something in your life, in your life, and you start going, oh, they just doing that for we see how long. I had to go through all that, too. People that stands against you. Back up. Satan, I'm telling you. When people are coming against you and telling you what you cannot do, daughter, you keep pushing. You hear me, Kenich? Keep pushing. When people are coming against Tell you what you can't do. The devil is a lie. Amen. The devil is a lie. Right. My God, the enemy always stands and come against my God progress and momentum. Mm -hmm. You can do it, Sheila. Yeah. Natalie, look at me. Look at your pastor. That's right. You can do it. Amen. When the enemy, and, and you know what? Think it not strange. I taught y'all that two Wednesdays ago. Yeah. He's supposed to come against momentum. He's supposed to come against holiness. He's supposed to come against, right? Why are you tripping out? I said the tree to stand the tallest, baby, going to get persecuted. I can't get... But be aware of the people that's always got something to say about your progress. It's, it, it, it's always trying to, you know, try, always trying to pull you back. Yeah. <sighs> trying to pull you down. Ah, stay away from them. It's contamination. Amen. That's why it's so important to know God's voice. His name means adversary. Watch this. Satan tells the Lord that the only reason why Job serves you is because you have blessed him with wealth. Satan says that if you were to remove your hand from Job's life, would you turn? Would, 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 would Job would turn away. And so I asked God. I said, God, man, you are. I asked God, Ooh, Jesus. I asked God. I said, God. See, Paul said, examine yourself. So I said, God, you have really blessed me, man. When y'all hear pastor say, I live a good life, I do. And I don't say that to boast. I live a really decent life. I, I ain't rich, but I live a good life. You know what I'm trying to say? I, I, I got a few little things that I, that I want and I get to get. But I ask, I said, God, is my heart tied to that stuff? God bless the young pastor with a nice vibe in church. I give God the glory. It's more of us. Some of us, but it's more. I mean, I begin to ask. I said, God. I said, God, oh, if you take it all, God, will I still serve you? Would I still go hard for you if you take all of that and I go back? See, I remember what it's like. I know the story, selling my clothes and walking down the street. I, God, if I went back, my God, if you took all that, though, and I didn't go back to the street store, but I didn't have all this, 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 this luxuries, my God. Oh, my God, would I still serve you? Ah, I'm waiting on God to say, yeah. I'm waiting on God to say, yeah. He ain't spoke yet. But I know Satan is asking about that one. Because he's going too hard. So the enemy sure want to silence my voice. Yeah. My God, there's too many people calling on the God that lives on the inside. There's too many people delivers connected to the God that's on the inside. So he's going to do everything he can. That's why you should be praying for your pastor, especially for those that really love me. Because I'm a real one, my God, and the devil don't like me. And so I ask God, Dean, is my loyalty connected to what you have blessed me with? But I didn't always have this. I started from the bottom, now I'm here. I remember working for $6.20 an hour. I remember when I didn't have the things that God has blessed me with. I worked for it. The church didn't buy it. 
Yeah, the church didn't bad. Y'all know that. I don't have to go into that story. Y'all know I don't take nothing from the church. My God, the church didn't bad. I work for everything I got. That's why I'm so passionate about the things of God, because I work for everything I got. My multi-millionaire brother didn't give it to me either. I work for it, and God gave it to me. But I asked God, Tony, that's what I want you to do, son. Ask God, if he take the stage from you, would you just be a simple Christian and still love him? If he take little fuzzies from you, would you still sow them? If he take your gift, Mike, would you love him because of just who he is? I need some of y'all to understand. Would you serve him just because of what he did for you on Calvary? Or is your loyalty and your commitment because of what he's done for you? See, I'm not afraid to examine myself. Some of us, my God, we got to weigh this thing, baby. Some of us, my God, our commitment, our loyalty is because of what he, we want him to do. We seek the hand of God and not the face. The hand is the blessing. The face is the intimacy. A lot of y'all, I hate to say it, I'm not throwing no stones. We got to make sure. Let me say it like this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm good. Thank you, Madeline. I'm good, woman of God. My God, a lot of us, us, my God, got to make sure that we do not seek the hand of God and not seek the face of God. The face, Snoop, is God. I don't want nothing from you. Just thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me a chance. Thank you for working me up for another day. If you don't give me nothing else, just make sure that I'm protected. Make sure I can take care of my kids. Make sure I can take care of my grandkids. Make sure I got gas. Why? I ain't never got to burn another pair of J's. I ain't never got to wear a brand new suit no more. Just, just thank you for what I already got. Thank you. And I'm still going to serve you. Boy, that's a, amen. Y'all yeah, yeah, caught it. I'm looking at y'all. Y'all like, ooh, Lord, my God. Hey! Come on, give God a hand, baby. Woo, let me finish. Put number three so I can get out of here. I don't want to go over to him. I asked God that help me, Lord. Woo, my God. If he starts subtracting. Now you ain't got no car. Now you got to catch the bus. Will you still be excited about God? I'm going to leave that alone because I got to get y'all out of here. To my men, whatever you do, whatever you do, don't love your woman more than you love God. Come on now. Come on now. Because when she shift on you, I won't see you no more. Some people is here because their woman made them come. They're not here because they love Christ. They're not here because they love me and this woman right here, and they don't feel called to this church. They just here because they're trying to keep peace at the crib. Women, don't love him more than you love God. Because when you stand before Christ, I promise you, he won't be there. Women, don't never choose a man over your children either. Amen, Snoop. Amen, Snoop. Okay, that's three. Let's get you out of here. My last point. Let's deal with this devastation. I ain't got that much on this one. The unbelievable devastation that this man had to endure. This man was filthy rich, and now he's flat broke. Bill Gates rich. Now he ain't got nothing. God allowed us, all ten of his children to be killed. God allowed all of his sheep. That's why the Bible says up there in the, in the first two or three verses up off of there that he had, it tells you the, the amount of livestock because when you had land and you had a lot of livestock, my God, you was considered rich. We look at rich in dollars in, in, in our currency, but my God, back in the Bible days when you had land and you owned a lot of cattle and all this stuff, you considered rich and wealthy. God took everything. If he take it all, that's why I ask you, can you stand to be blessed? If we had to move up out of the crib and go to a two-bedroom apartment, can you be happy? I told my wife the other day, I ain't lying. I said, man, you know, let's sell all this and get us a two-bedroom. She said, that's too small. We got grandkids. I said, nope, they ain't going to be over <laughs> This other day. Then I ain't moving no two-bedroom. I've been in the penitentiary. I can survive in a six-by-nine with one stool and one pickle, Roman noodles and soup and oatmeal pies. I can't get nobody to sit. I know what to do. I ain't got to. Let me get y'all out of here, baby. <laughs> ah! Would I still love him if he take it all? Who can you still love him if he take it all? Mm. God took everything from Job. And let me close the show so y'all can know the story. 
He dealt with devastation. That's 7 through 19. I'm not going to read it. As much as he can, Satan leashes hell on Job's life. Job saw nearly everything he loved, church, and lived for taken away. At this crisis, uh, this devastation in Job's life unfolds. He hears of the thefts and destructions of everything he has. One after one, my God, stuff was taken from him. So write this down. A up on the point number three, and we done. Let's look at the sorrow of Job's devastation. And that's verses uh, 13 through, and through all the way to 19. I don't want to read it. Just when Job thought things could get no any worse, y'all, the most devastating news of all reached his ears and broke his heart. He was told that all ten of his children were dead. Whew, Jesus. She da 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 bo she kid up. That is some of the worstest news you can ever hear. Mm. I don't know how many times along the way, my God, my brother, John, when he's an MBA, he told us, my God, he's even in his book, how when he was seated in phone number 918, come across his phone when he was playing in an NBA, uh, he thought it was going to be Tiki or uh, my wife, I mean my mom or somebody, mm, calling him and telling him Juju is dead. My brother talks about his book. He played with fear, wondering if what's going to happen to his little brother. Because I was going so hard for the streets. And he lived in that level of fear. Job later on in the story, we're going to deal with Job again next week. He said, the very thing I feared the most has come upon me. My mama lived in a level of fear. My grandmother, my family, my wife. Then when my own son was born, the countless nights that my wife would stay up crying, wondering if something going to happen to Juju. I'm nervous, wreck. Wondering if I'm going to get that call. I mean, one time I was at Pig's pop-off basketball game, and, uh, and somebody ran up and said, Juju, man, we just heard, man, did little Juju just get killed? Did little Juju just get killed? And so I'm calling my son. Because, see, when I was growing up, it was just me and Jamal's renting. Yeah was on the Jujus, you know what I'm saying? What no Jujus. And so they were like, Juju, we heard this dude named Juju just got shot. This little kid just got shot, you know what I'm trying to say? And he was a blood because my son used to try to do all that stuff. I didn't teach him none of that mess. But, and so I'm, I'm calling, and he not answering. I'm calling, he not answering. I'm thinking, oh, Lord. He finally answered. He said, Daddy, I'm chill. I'm over here chilling. But it was another Juju. It's several Jujus now. And so what I do, I teach my son, I say, see, son, there's so many people called Juju now. And so therefore, if you're doing something, this is years, this a couple years ago, and they say, there go Juju right there, and somebody don't know, they, while well, they hear Juju, okay, that's the one, get him. Yeah. See what I'm saying? You be like, man, what's up? I don't even know what you're talking about. Your name Juju? Yeah, my name Juju. And all of a sudden, bleh, they give it to you. Yeah. That's why I tell you, you got to be careful, son. Yeah. You got to be careful because there's so many other Jujus. Yeah. But I, where I'm going with this is the fear. Mm -hmm. my God. The fear that I caused my family, now that same fear, my God, my own son, at one time caused me that same fear. See, try to say, and so can you imagine? That's why I called it, my God, point number three, the devastation. Y'all give me a minute, baby, because this is medicine to my people, man. My God, give me a minute. Go to Corral, I can wait. My God, the devastation of getting a phone call. I'm, I, I, I got you, Ken. I'm with you, Kiki. I'm going to help you, man of God. The devastation. Oh, my God. Of getting that phone call about your children. This man ain't bother nobody. Job was living an upright life. He wasn't bothering nobody. He shunned evil. He was pleasing to the Lord. My God, all hell is broke loose in his life. All because God and Satan is having a board meeting about him. He know nothing about it. One after one, if you read the story, they come and tell him we was doing this and we doing that. And now your sons is gone. Your daughters is killed. Oh, my God, help me, my God. Oh, my God, your cattle is gone. Oh, my God, he took everything. He devastated Job's life. Ah! I feel it and he devastated his life. Can you stand to be blessed? What do you do when you get the phone call? Like he can't had to get when his daughter got murdered and she wasn't bothering nobody. We in the church got to wake up, baby. Stuff is happening in this world while we going through the motions, playing, leaving up out here for the go smoke, choke, and everything else, and the enemy is coming. Oh my God, shift me, Holy Ghost. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. 
Man, that didn't hit me like that, Moses. Oh, I forgot about your son. Murdered. We do the funeral. What do you do when you get that call, son? I'm coming in for a landing. I'm in the spirit. I ain't going to even mess with the rest of that. I'm going to let that sit right there. What do you do when you get that devastation call? It might not be your kids. It may be your grandkids. It may be you. You might have got laid off or anything. What do you do when devastation hits you, church? Are you built to last, baby? Are you anchored enough in God where you can stand the test of time, baby? Are you just going through the motions? Are you ready? What do you do? Natalie, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do, Dominique? My God, when dad is no longer here, I'm talking to somebody up in here. Shift your mind. Devastation hit Job. And the very thing about Job is the Bible said that Job never, because the God knew what was in him. Who she can't almost shun Because God knew what was in him. His wife said, why don't you curse God and die? What do you do, Minister Oliver, when your brother is murdered? Devastation. And you serving God and toss ain't bothering nobody. And you get that phone call that you got. I'm trying to close. What devastation is upon you that you feel like, where did this come from? Why am I going through this? What did I do, God? Why do I deserve this? What did I do, God? Why am I going through what I'm going through? What questions do you have? Oh my God, bring the lights down, baby. This is an altar call. 